Good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you again on the Sunday morning, the 9th of August. I pray that you will be blessed through the word today and that you'll have a wonder, wonderful Sunday. I want to read from the scripture reading that's set for today, Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to verse 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and began and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed out, and then when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of Christ. So let's just bow our heads in prayer and ask God's blessing on his word this morning. Father, we thank you for your word to us this morning. We pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon us. I pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon me as I share, with, share your word with your people this morning that your word would become a living word for each and every one of us. I pray, Lord, that this word <clears throat> would be a word of comfort to, to someone today and that as we listen to your word, that your word would inspire us, that your word would bless us. And so, Father, we just give this time to you now and we pray that you would have your way with us. And so, Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I feel quite excited about this word this morning to share this word with you. Um, I always feel excited when I share God's word with you, but especially this word, because I really believe that the word is for us in difficult times, in the storms of life, because this story is a story about faith growing in the storms of life. It is a story of faith growing in the storms of life. The passage is the story of how Jesus walked on the water. However, the story of Peter also walking on the water is found only in Matthew's Gospel. Mark and John talk about Jesus walking on the water, but their story does not include Peter walking on the water. Jesus had just finished, the, had just finished feeding the crowd of 5,000 men with five loaves and two fishes. And then John tells us in his, uh, in his Gospel that because of the mir miracle, the, the multitude was clamoring to crown Jesus as king in John chapter 6, verse 15. Jesus then rather abruptly tells his disciples to get into a boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the lake while he sent the multitude away and went off alone to pray. And so the first thing we see uh, when we look at this is the disciples went out in faith. They trusted Jesus. They went out in faith. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 23, remember this is what, what I read. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat ahead of him while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Although the disciples did not exactly uh, uh, know what the Lord was doing, they set sail because he told them to go and said so. He told them to go. Why did the Lord send them away? Well, the gospel gives us several, re several reasons why the Lord sent the disciples on ahead of him and stayed behind to spend time alone. The first we see is in Matthew 14, 23. And also, if you look at Mark chapter 6, verse 46, we see that he wanted the opportunity to pray. Now, there's an example for us, the Son of God, who needed time to pray. That says something to us in our walk with the Lord, 
that we need to spend time with the Lord in prayer. Jesus needed the opportunity to pray to the Father. The second point I want to make is this, that he wanted to escape the crowd and get some rest. He wanted to be alone. He wanted to get away from everybody. He just wanted to rest. That's in Mark chapter 6, verse 46. The third thing I want to say is this, that he wanted to stop the crowds and stop their desire to make him king by force. And that's especially, you'll see that in John chapter 6, verse 15, where the crowd wants to make him king by force. And then the fourth thing we see is that he still needed time, made, most possi possibly. Yeah, you know, when it doesn't say this, but we just assume that he still needed time to deal maybe with the emotional impact of the death of John the Baptist, Matthew chapter 14, verse 13. But perhaps most important was his need for prayer, where he really needed to spend time with the Father. This was a critical moment in the ministry of Jesus, and his popularity was high. He was riding on a wave of public sentiment, but Jesus also knows how fickle people were and how fickle people can be and how quickly that sentiment can change. John records that when Jesus does not do what the crowd wants and when he does not say what they expect to hear, it says here in John chapter 6 verse 66, John, 6, uh, John chapter 6 verse 66, it says, From this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. So you can see how fickle people are. You find that these, many of these disciples turned their back on him and they left him. And so as, as Jesus sat on this mountainside, you could see, you could see uh, uh, well, I guess he could see, because he could see them on the, on the lake. He could see them uh, toiling and rowing helplessly. Yet he doesn't, he, he doesn't seem to be in a hurry to get to them. He did, he, there's a delay in him coming to them. He knew their thoughts. He must have known their thoughts. He even knew that they were wondering where he was and why he chose to let the storm batter them for a while. Finally, he does go to them. He does go out to his disciples. But why did he delay? Why did Jesus delay? You see, when the Lord delays coming to us, when we find ourselves in the storm, it is always so that I believe that some greater purpose can be worked out in our lives. You see, God has never promised our lives would be empty of pain, disappointment, or storm. But rather, He does promise us resources on our journey, even through a raging storm. The disciples knew that the next wave would take them to the bottom. They were really struggling in, in, on, that, uh, on that lake. They were, they, they, were being, they were battered by the storm, by the wind and the waves. And, and they, they expected the next wave to take them down to the bottom of the lake. Their faith, you see, was being paralyzed by fear. Their faith was being paralyzed by fear. They were, they were afraid that all of them would die. Can you imagine how they must have felt? But of course we all know that they were wrong. But so are we. So are you and I when we panic during difficult times when we feel that everything is coming apart and we, we're going to drown. In reality, you see, their problem was not the storm around them, but the unbelief within them. I think this is so important for us to hear. Their problem was not the storm around them, but the unbelief within them. And I think that's a word for us as well. It's not about the storm around them, but the unbelief within them. Not about the storm around us, but it's about our unbelief inside of us. So let's just break this down. We see the disciples are struggling. The disciples did as Jesus directed, and they began the voyage to the other side of the lake. But this was not to be an easy trip for, for them. And they soon found themselves in the storm, as we, as we already said. And I think that it is important for us to notice that the disciples were in the midst of a storm, this is very important. They were in the midst of the storm, not because they had disobeyed Jesus. They find themselves in the midst of the storm because they had obeyed him. He told them to go. Matthew tells us that Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. Unexpectedly and seemingly without warning, they were in the midst of a terrible storm. In other words, the disciples were in the middle of a storm 
in direct obedience to a command of the Lord. How can that be? How can that be that you and I can find ourselves in a storm and be right in the center of God's will? Be in the center of God's will and yet we find ourselves in the storm. The disciples did. Even though the disciples had no way of knowing it, during those terrible moments, that storm was divinely appointed. It was a divinely appointed vehicle to teach them about God and about his power in their lives. And maybe that's a lesson for us as well. When we find ourselves in the storm, even though we, we, even though we are in the will of the Lord, and we find ourselves in the storm, with our difficulties, with our trials, with our stresses, and even failures, you and I will never grow to be what the Lord wants us to become. Faith must be tested before it can be trusted. Faith must be tested before it can be trusted. You see, Jesus tells us the purpose of trials is to test and deepen our faith. That's what Jesus told us. We see in James chapter 1, verses, uh, James 1, verses 2 to 3, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation because it puts it so beautifully. James says, Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. Now that's a wonderful word for us, you see. It's a wonderful word for us that in the storms, when we find ourselves in the storms, our faith has been tested, but it, it, it you know, develops uh, character and it helps us to be able to stand firm and be able to do anything for the Lord. But we mustn't forget that while the disciples fought the storm, Jesus was praying for his disciples. Even today, from the heights of heaven, our resurrected Savior is praying for you and for me in the storms of life as he sits at the right hand of the Father. So Jesus is praying for us as well when we face the storms of life. The second thing I want to say about this is that the disciples find themselves in this crisis of faith. In chapter 14 of Matthew, verses 24 to 27, we see, they, you, we see that they find themselves in a crisis of faith. Here where the disciples struggling in obedience and making no progress. The disciples were struggling in obedience. They were obedient to the Lord, but yet they were making no progress. They were stuck in the storm. This is very important, I want to say to you, sisters and brothers, to obey Jesus is not always easy. Not always easy. Sometimes it is hard to be faithful to the Lord. Sometimes it is hard to do the right thing. And we find ourselves in the storm. And perhaps to the disciples, the fact that the Lord was not with them seemed to indicate that he was either unconcerned or unaware of their plight. Does Jesus know? Does he care? Have you ever felt like that sometime when you find yourself, you're, you're doing the will of the Lord, you're working for the Lord, you, you, uh, you believe you're following everything that the Lord has told you to, to do, but you find yourself in the storm and, and you wonder where he is. Lord, where are you? Do you know that I'm in the storm, Lord? Do you care? We sometimes, you see, mistakenly conclude that we are alone. We think we are alone. That no one, not even God, knows what is happening in our lives. That's not true. Very unexpectedly and apparently without warning, they were in the midst of a terrible storm. That happens to us. Without warning, the storm can come. It says in Matthew chapter, uh, in Matthew, uh, chapter the, the, uh, Matthew, it says in verse 24, uh, Matthew uh, 14 verse 24. I want to just read this quickly. Let me just find it uh, because this is important. Matthew 14, verse 24. It says this. I want to just find it quickly. Give you a chance just to think about what I'm saying for a moment. We see here, uh, it says here in Matthew 14, verse 24. To obey Jesus, um, no, sorry, here it is, looking at the wrong place. 
Matthew said in, in verse 24 that the boat was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. The boat was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Matthew says in verse 24 that this is now the fourth watch of the night, which means according to the Roman time, it is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. The disciples have been struggling for seven or eight hours trying to get to the other side, and they're still only about halfway across the lake. The irony is that they are in this miserable trouble because they had obeyed Jesus. They obeyed Jesus and now they're in, the, in this trouble. Perhaps you and I are in a storm right now. Maybe someone out there is in a storm. Or maybe you and I may, may find ourselves in a storm sometime. Or maybe you are in one right now. In such times, you see, it is easy to lose faith. The problem may be that perhaps you thought or have even been taught that life would be smooth sailing with Jesus in your life. We've listened to preachers teach this. You know, you follow Jesus, everything's going to be smooth sailing. That's not true. You thought with Jesus in your life, there would be no storms in your life. However, the problem is that it is just not true. The passage is the death blow to prosperity teaching. This passage really is the death blow to prosperity teaching. There are times where we find ourselves in the storm. Even when believers follow Christ's commands, they may face hardships. Storms come and do come in the center of God's will. Storms can and do come to God's children. Even in the storms, Jesus is always available to help. That's the good news. That you see, we never, we never set free from the storms. But when we do find ourselves in the storms, Jesus is available to help us in those storms. The presence of Jesus removes all need for fear. The storms of life always seem to be made up of two elements. Trouble that comes to us and seems to overwhelm us. And secondly, the seemingly absence of the Lord. Trouble that comes to us and seems to overwhelm us. And seemingly, and, the, and then you see the, the secondly, the seemingly absence of the Lord. Yet the scripture says these words in verse 25. Jesus went out to them. Jesus went out to them. Jesus came in the darkest part of the night when they had exhausted their energies and they were in deep despair. He not only saw their physical problems with the wind, he saw their inner problems with fear. Even when believers follow Christ's command, they may face hardships. Storms can and do come in the center of God's will. Storms can and do come to God's children. Even in the storms, Jesus is always available to help you and me. The presence of Jesus removes all need for fear. And then the Savior arrives. Matthew 14 verse 25. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. They thought he was a ghost and they were terrified. Mark's gospel says that the disciples cried out. Which literally means they screamed when they saw him. I want to say something quite profound to you, my sisters and brothers. This is what I want to say to you. You may know the Lord, but you will never know him deeply until he has come to you in the middle of one of the storms of life. Let me say that again. You may know the Lord but you will never know him deeply until he comes to you in the middle of one of the storms of your life. In the lives of the disciples, the absence or presence of faith was revealed in the distresses of life. The absence or presence of faith was revealed in the distresses of life. So it is with us as well. It is the storms of life that our faith, it is in the storms of life that our faith is revealed. It is the crisis of life which reveals our faith. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Peter says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And I pray that's a word for someone this morning. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Jesus longs for us to put our trust in him. The only one who can take us through the storm, not around the storm, not over the storm, but through it, is Jesus the Christ. He's, he, 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 
He is so gracious and he's so good and he's so loving and so tender and he takes us through the storm. His response to their fear was with calming words. His words were calming to them when they were so fearful. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, he says, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And I pray you would hear the voice of the Lord saying to you this morning, Take courage, I am with you, it is I, don't be afraid. Thirdly, we see the disciples growing in faith. We see how they start to grow in their faith. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 to 29. Peter says, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. And then we see what happens. Jesus asked the Lord if it can come to him, and, and the Lord says, yes, come. But what does Peter have to do? Remember, there's a storm. There are waves. Peter wants to go to the Lord. Something inside of him wants to he just wants to go out to, to Jesus. Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Now for Peter to do that, he needed to let go of the boat. He needed to step out in faith and, and put his feet on the, on the waters where they were, you know, where there's a storm and the waters are not calm and it's rough and the wind is blowing. He had to let go of the boat. The boat is a safe place. He needed to let go, and only then, when he let go and he started to walk, he realized that he's not sinking. I can walk on the water. And he's looking at Jesus. He's keeping his eyes on Jesus. And while he's keeping his eyes on Jesus, he finds that he has the ability to walk on the water in spite of the wind, in spite of the waves. But then he does something which so many of us do. We take our eyes off Jesus. And we look at the storm around us. We look at the waves. We look at the wind. We see the impact of the storm around us. And because we take our eyes off Jesus, we see the storm. We see the dangers of the storm. And it says in, the, in this reading that when Peter looked at the waves and the storm, he started to sink. He started to sink. And even then, when he was starting to sink, Jesus was disappointed in him and his, about his lack of faith. But did Jesus allow him to drown? No. Jesus still went to him and took him by the hand and lifted him up out of the water. And the two of them walked together and got back into the boat, the safe place. And then what did Jesus do? In Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 33, it says, And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died, then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When Jesus got into that boat with them, the wind died and everything was calm. And, they, and they, they realized and knew once again who he was. Truly, you are the Son of God. The disciples' faith grows in the storm. Our faith grows in the storms of life. When we allow Jesus into our lives, into our boat, so to speak. Remember last time I shared about the boat being the church. When, when significant of, of the, the, the symbolism of the boat is that the boat is the church and the, the, the sea is an evil place. And Jesus can calm that waves and that storm. And he gets into the boat where the disciples are, where his people are. The storm and the waves are calm. And he... And he's there with us. And he takes away our fears. And so the disciples' faith grows in the storm. Our faith grows in the storm. And so my sisters and brothers, I pray that if you are going through a storm, that you would take Jesus' hand and allow him into your, into your life, into your home. Allow him to embrace you with his love. Allow him to, to put his arms around you and tell you, I am with you. Don't look at the storms. Don't look at what you are going through right now. Keep your eyes on me. I will take you through it. I'm not going to take the storm away. I'm not going to take you around it. I'm not going to take you over it. I'm going to take you through the storm. But you don't have to be afraid. I'm with you. I will not allow you to sink. I will not allow you to drown. That's the love that God has for you and for me. And so I pray that this word will be a blessing to you. 
And as we look at the story, and, and as we learn uh, what the disciples went through, it's a lesson for you and I. Because Jesus allowed this to happen for a reason, so that they could grow. He allows things to happen in our lives so that we can grow in our faith. And so we see once again that our faith grows in the storms of life. So let us pray. Father, we just thank you that in the storms of life, we are never alone. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are there for us. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us on our journey. We pray that you would just give us the strength to do your work and to do your will. Help us always to be good witnesses, Lord, to those around us. And when people can see us and the way we deal with the storms of life in our own lives and the attitudes that we have, that they can see that we're getting our strength from someone that is uh, greater than ourselves. And they can see that there is something holy and divine that's keeping us strong and keeping us going. And then we'll be able to share with people and say it's because of Jesus in our lives that we are able to to to, um, to walk the path that he's put before us, that we are able to go through the storms of life. And so, Father, take away all fear. Our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. We're not afraid of the future because you are already there. And so we pray for ourselves. We pray for our children. pray for our grandchildren. We pray for our families. We pray, Lord, that you would bless our families. I pray for that you would bless uh, all those who are sick and suffering, um, those who are suffering from uh, cancer and other sicknesses. We pray, Lord, that you would help them through that storm and that you would bless them, that you would heal them. Pray, Lord, that you would just continue to sustain those who are sick, that, Lord, they would, wouldn't look at the storms, but they would keep their eyes on you. They would focus on you, Lord. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters at Gordon's Bay United Church. I pray for all my brothers and sisters in other churches in this area that are friends of ours who are connected to us that we know. We pray for your church. This is here where we live in Gordon's Bay area. There are many churches, Lord, but we're all part of your vineyard. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless your church, that you would strengthen your church. We pray for your church in South Africa, that your church would be strong. Pray for peace in our country and prosperity for all our people. We pray for our government that they would uh, that they would lead with wisdom and with justice and make right decisions. And we pray, Lord, that the economy will grow. We pray for the end of this uh, COVID-19 uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. We pray that a cure will be found, um, uh, for, uh, that, that we'll be able to overcome this, that the vaccine will be found, Lord, and we'll be able to overcome this virus, and that the economies of the world can become stronger again. And that we can learn from the lessons of this storm, the storm of this COVID-19 coronavirus, that we can learn from the storms, Lord, of this virus, that we can learn from you and, and, and our faith can grow and be tested in this storm, knowing that Jesus is with us and he will see us through. And so, Father, I want to pray, Lord, that you will continue to guide our leaders of, of Gordon's Bay United Church. Give us wisdom, give us insight to know what we need to be doing, uh, when we can start services, um, what is the right thing to do, that we uh, uh, do the responsible things and, and make good choices. We pray for wisdom, Father. We pray also for your protection. And so we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would bless us. I pray, Lord, that you would continue just to be our strength, that you would guide us and that you would watch over us. And so we thank you for this Sunday, Lord. And we pray that you would bless this Sunday and that you would have your hand upon each and every one of us. That, Father, we would just be able to face this week that lies ahead with great courage, with great strength, even though there may be storms that we have to go through. Help us to face it with courage and with strength because we know, Jesus, that you are with us. You've given us your Holy Spirit. So we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we thank you for loving us before we loved you. And, Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, my dear sisters and brothers, may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and, and sustain you and strengthen you and be with you and your families and just continue to keep your eyes on Him. He will see you through the storm and He will bless you. So have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye.